Hey everyone, today for OT we're going to be doing two things with painting. We're going to be painting some letters with Q-tips and then painting some flowers with either a toilet paper roll, a paper towel roll, or a homemade roll. Um, if you don't have any of those available, it's easy to just wrap up some construction paper and then use that just like you would use a toilet paper roll or a paper towel roll. So for these activities, I'm going to put down a sheet of plastic on my table because paint can sometimes get messy. I've got two pieces of construction paper, one for my letters and one for my flowers. And then I've got the paint from my OT kit, the Q-tips from my OT kit, and then I've got my paper towel rolls. Um, I've got two for different types of flowers that we're going to stamp. And like I said, if you don't have extra paper towel or toilet paper rolls candy, um, you can just roll up a section of your construction paper. What I did for this one was I cut a piece of paper into a strip and then I rolled it up. And then um, that was just like one of these toilet paper rolls. So, get all of your items together, and then the first thing we'll do is we're going to draw or write. We're going to write a letter on your page. I would recommend having parents write the letter, showing your child the correct way to make the letter. This way your child has a nice visual of the correct shape of the letter, and then they get the sense for where do I start my letter, and what sequence do I use to make the letter. I'm going to show you, um, if you're in Teacher Lael or Teacher Kathy's class, I'm going to send this to you with um, the email with this video link. This is the Handwriting Without Tears suggested letter formations. So there's all of your capitals there and then your lowercase. I'm not going to do, oh, wrong way. I'm not going to do, um, any specific letters, you're gonna to need to look at your child's work and see what letters do they often write incorrectly. Um, so some of your children are first starting to work on their writing, so they're still working on their capitals. Some of them have mastered their capitals, they're working on perfecting those letter formations for their lowercase letters. So what you as a parent are going to need to do is take a look at their writing and say, hmm, you know, they tend to make their S's backwards, or their E's tend to be upside down. Pick a specific letter or a specific group of letters. So um, the diver letters you can see on that sheet all start at the top, dive down, swim back up and around, like N and R. Look for patterns or specific letters that your child has trouble with. Um, I'm going to do a variety of them just because I will give you examples. Um, but what you're going to do, have the parent first draw the letter, write the letter, and then have your child use a Q-tip and the paint so they can dab dot, dot, dot on top of the letter in the correct formation. So we'll see if my camera can pick up on this. I might need to grab, I'm gonna grab a marker so you guys can see it. You won't wanna use a marker, you'll wanna use something that will blend in a little bit better like a pencil. Um, but just so you guys can see it, I'm going to use a marker. So for a capital N, which is a frog jump letter, I would do big line down, frog jump up, down, up. Oh, and I tried to do it upside down so you guys could see, but my camera flipped it. <laughs> um, let's try that. No, my brain can't process. I'll just do it for myself, not for you guys. Big line down, frog jump up, down, and then up. So you, the parent, would write the letter initially, and then you would let your child use their Q-tips and their paint to dab colorful on top. And you can see with my marker that, oh, and this is incorrect. I started at the bottom. You wanna remind your child to do it the right way. So all of our frog jumps start with a big line down. They can use different colors for different sides of their Q-tip. 
frog jump up, big line down, and then a big line up. So encourage your child to make the letter the same way that you made it so that you're reinforcing correct letter formations. So we'll do a magic C letter, magic C, helicopter up, bump and down is an A. And then again, when your child is making that letter, reinforce the correct place for them to start with a magic C. All the way around, helicopter up, bump, and then back down. And then the last one we'll do is a diver letter. Dive down, swim back up, and around for an N. If your child is having trouble starting in the correct spot, you can always put um, a little star or a smiley wherever they should start, or even a little dot. A lot of times we do what we call a start dot, where the dot indicates where your child should start. Be careful though, some kids like to draw the start dot. Remind them the teacher or the parent draws the start dot, you just make the letter. Because we don't want little dots all over your child's paper every time they make a letter. So then for the end, you go, Line down, swim back up and around. Your child might want to just trace over. That's okay as long as they're doing the correct formation. Whenever they do little dots like this, it forces them to slow down and they're more likely to go in the correct pattern rather than if they just make lines, they might start any which way and it's harder for them to take that pause and analyze where are they starting and which sequence are they using. So those are your letters. They're backwards, sorry about that. Um, and then for your flowers, you can do one of two things for the flowers. I would encourage the parents to make the lines on either the rolled up construction paper or on your cardboard rolls, and then have your child cut the lines to make the stamp. Cutting the straight lines for this type of stamp is going to be easier, oh sorry, this type of stamp is going to be easier than if you make a V shape, it will make a little bit more detailed of a flower shape but the V is going to be just a tiny bit trickier. Make sure your child is holding the roll in their hands and turning it to snip on the line. Cutting with their scissors pointing away from them. And then once they've cut all their lines, they can fold the flower petals back. This one is a little bit uneven, so I'm just gonna push it down so hopefully all of my flower petals will touch. Then two options for how you're going to get your paint onto your stamp. You can either use your Q-tip to paint each individual flower petal, but be generous here because you want the paint to come off onto your paper. Or, you can take your paint and put it onto a plate or a lid, something where you can really dump it out and then just dip your stamp into the paint. If your child does not like getting paint on their hands, make sure you have a paper towel or a washcloth nearby so that they can wipe their hands if they get some on there. So I'm just gonna make sure all of my petals are getting paint on them. And then stamp it down on the paper.
So you see, I kind of had to wiggle and turn my roll all the way around so that it would make the full flower shape. So the same thing if you decide to make this V shape, the only difference will be that you'll have a little bit thicker flower petals. I'll show you that one. And you could do, I can't think of any right now, but you could do other shapes for your flower as well. Feel free to let your child be creative with this. The main thing is that they are working on their scissor skills using two hands together, um, using that fingertip grasp, and then even folding the petals down helps to strengthen those fingertips. This one's a little bit thicker and it's not really folding, so I'm gonna cut it again. Add a couple more petals here. And then we'll get my paint. Ooh, making a mess. Dip it onto the plate. And then stamp. Stamping every side to make a nice flower shape. There you go. And I might not have done the best job choosing my colors because I chose purple paint and blue paper. So it doesn't really show up too much. Um, so think about what colors of paint you got in your kit and what color paper you would like to use so that your colors blend in or pop out as much as you would like them to. This is the activity that we'll be doing at our OT live Zoom session today for Teacher Lael's class. So if you wanna get all of these things ready, that would be awesome. And if you're not in Teacher Lael's class, this activity is great that you can do on your own. If you have any questions, feel free, oh, as always, feel free, of course, as always, <laughs> to shoot me an email or give me a call. We're almost to summer break, guys, and then we'll get to do our summer school activities. Have fun, everyone.